Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is your weekend edition, yes? Yeah? So this is the general energy reading, um, divine conversation for Friday, in November 30th through December 2nd. Yes, Sunday, December 2nd. Um, so today, Friday, is the last day of November. We're going into December, guys. The year is almost over. Yeah, this is crazy. This <laughs> it's been it's been a very interesting year. But anyway, so this is just a general energy reading, okay? This is not sign specific, this is not love specific, this is just whatever spirit wants to speak with us about today. Speak about with us to whatever. <laughs> whatever whatever spirit wants to talk about. Yeah. Um, this doesn't have to resonate right now. This could We could be talking about something that happened in the past. We could be talking about something that's coming on down the pipeline. We could be talking about something that is not even remotely on your radar, but that's okay. Um, I encourage you guys to still listen. There are probably a lot of good things that you can get out of it. Yes? And there are probably some ways that you can, you know, pick out the messages and apply it to what's going on in your life. Okay? Excellent. So let's get started, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please, please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For today, Monday, I'm sorry, oh goodness. <laughs> today, Friday, November 30th through Sunday, December 2nd. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. Um, there are a lot of different colors going on. I'm seeing yellow. I'm seeing pink. I'm seeing blue. It's just, it feels, it just feels like fun. It feels like a party. I don't know if any of you are having a party or something, or maybe you're getting ready for a party. I don't know. But there's a lot of th different things going on here. A lot of different things. So, so I'm just going to let the cards speak, I guess. Because I really don't even know where to start with, <laughs> with all the energy here. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to let the cards speak, and we'll see what happens, okay? All right. One more shuffle, okay? Spirit saying one more shuffle, and then we'll get into it. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. For the weekend, yeah? This is your weekend edition, so let's go see what's going on this weekend. What's going on? What's going on, Spirit? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's start here. We've got the Page of Cups. All right. So we're still in that dreamer energy. Page of Cups. This is our overall message for the weekend. Um, this is the dreamer. Okay, this is apologies. This is... Um, rediscovering your emotions in some ways. This could be messages of love. This could be minor little, little flirt. This could be like little flirty stuff. So there's some of you that could be going out this weekend that could be having a really good time, maybe going to some sort of holiday party or just some like sort of get together. And you're just kind of flirty and playful. This is that kind of playfulish energy. That's like, you know, childlike nature. Um, it's really nothing serious because it's just a page, but it's still flirty, it's still fun, it's still trying to have a good time, that's okay. Some of you may be coming out of the hermit funk or just hermit mode, which I'm feeling like for a lot of you is kind of a welcome thing because, you know, this last hermit stage that we've all been through was very purgy, extremely purgy. And so some of you may not really want to be in that energy anymore so some of you may be just saying screw it I'm getting up and I'm going out this weekend and I'm having a good time and I encourage that because that's that's a-okay let's see what else we've got for the weekend thank you so much spirit thank you so so much 
Friday, November 30th, Sunday, December 2nd. Okay. We've got the Seven of Pentacles here. We've got the Knight of Cups. Woo! And we have the Lovers. Oh my. All right. So some of you definitely could be there. Could There is an energy underneath the deck. It's Judgment. Okay. So there is definitely an energy of... Um, bringing in some sort of harvest for some of you with the lovers here for some of you you know you could be connecting with a soulmate um you could meet someone new i'm getting you know if some if, if you're just like out and about this weekend hanging out with some friends or whatnot there could be you know a new connection that's made it's entirely possible for some of you though this is really talking about that union within okay um and what I'm getting with judgment here is that for those of us that have been, been really going through a serious purgy, purgy period, um, you know, the final judgment call has been made. The final decision has been made. You know, the final conclusion has been deduced, we'll say. Um, you know, you really have come to this reconciliation, okay? Now, that's, the Page of Cups can talk about reconciliation. For some of you, I really feel like there is definitely an energy of having this sort of reconciliation within, between the masculine and feminine within. Now, I'm not saying you've reached complete 100% union, but you've, come, you, you've definitely gotten to a place um, where there's greater balance. Uh, you, were, you are way more unified than you were ever were in the past, and that's fantastic. And I'm really seeing a lot of the viewers right now, and many of those, many of you that are watching this video right now, moving forward in some way, um, moving forward with a full cup, okay, I mean, of the full cup being, you know, the ace of cups that you may have really been able to generate here with the lovers between, and bringing this balance between masculine and feminine within. For some reason, I'm seeing pregnancy here. Almost as if the feminine figure is pregnant. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's what I'm seeing right now. So some of you may be getting pregnant this weekend. Or maybe on a path. <laughs> if you don't want to get pregnant, please keep in mind, keep that in mind. But I feel like some of you could be on if you could be on the path to a pregnancy. Okay. Um, with the Knight of Cups, I see you guys being the ones that are moving forward with a full cup, as especially with a full cup as this Page of Cups here, in a sense, just trying to get back out there, just meet some new people, have some fun, make some new friends maybe. And here with the Seven of Pentacles, um, this is, you know, the harvest. It's like you're reaping the benefits of this purging aspect, this, this hermit mode that you've been in, and now you have a sort of rebirth uh, uh, with judgment here, a second chance, a resurrection. That's beautiful, guys. <clears throat> That's really beautiful. I want to go ahead and clarify this section, and then I'm going to do a second pull, because this is our weekend edition. So this is just, you know, these are just your energies. It's your first set of energies for the weekend, yeah? So I'm going to start with the Page of Cups, and we'll see what comes out. All right. So for the Page of Cups, please clarify. Thank you so much. Five of Wands. Okay. Alright. We've got some things that have flipped over here. We have the Five of Wands and we have the World. Wow. Okay. And then there's some things. I believe the Page of Swords flipped over over here. Let me just... No, the King of Swords. Ooh, okay. What else? Something else flipped over. Give me just a second, guys. Here we go. Up oh, the 
Five of Cups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, that's, there's someone, okay, underneath the deck, <laughs> wow, we have the Four of Cups. Now, it's really interesting because um, I really feel like with this version of the Page of Cups here in this deck, it really looks like somebody's walking away from something or at least walking through something new. It's almost like, it almost feels like the fool. Um, like someone, this woman, or yeah, this woman is walking towards this like gateway into the unknown. I just get, I just get a feeling of somebody walking away here or just moving forward, moving on to something new, right? We have the Five of Wands, the King of Swords, the World, and the Five of Cups. Underneath the deck is the Four of Cups. So we're talking about some sort of missed opportunity here for some of us, all right? Okay, there was a situation, and I really feel, I do, I feel like this is about, this page of cups is somebody walking away from a situation. Um, but this is because they know, they really have learned about what they, their worth, okay? They've learned about the value of the emotions and how they need to be valued. They need to be understood. They need to be taken into account. But this could also be, with the page of cups, it could be some sort of apology, even some sort of reconciliation, all right? Now, what's happening here is um, with the Five of Wands, there was conflict surrounding this situation, opposing opinions, um, differing opinions, people being uh, peanut gallery, kind of, like people putting their two cents in where it doesn't necessarily belong or it's not really desired, you know? Um, and even if you're in a situation where it's like, well... Um, I don't really want these people's opinion, but I take it anyway, or I don't really, I don't really have much of a mind of my own in some cases, so I'm just constantly listening to what other people say, or, um, I value the other people's, other people's opinion over my own, like that kind of, any one of those situations, that's what I'm getting with the Five of Wands, and with the King of Swords, um, the King of Swords in this feels like someone that's way too logical, okay? Um, is way too detached. It, and this would definitely, it, I'm getting somewhat of a King of Pentacles vibe in the sense that this is somebody that, um, you know, if it's not, if, if, if it opposes the public opinion or it rubs people wrong in any sort of way, then he's not going to go with it. This is almost like a King of Swords in reverse type of situation where it's like, you know, he much he would much rather listen to opposing opinion or public opinion than think for himself. Now, in other cases, in other cases, this King of Swords could be that person that is cutting out the opinions of others cutting out the peanut gallery saying look i don't care about your opinion i'm going to do what it is i want to do and that's that and just putting an end to it here with the world so with the five of wands the king of swords and the world i feel like at, at one point maybe this person was like uh was too wrapped up in what other people had to say about the situation too wrapped up in the um the chaos, the opposing opinions. Now, and this also could be just inner conflict, you know, not just conflict with uh, outside or externally, but inner conflict, right? But now the King of Swords is coming into play and saying, look, cut it out. We're putting an end to this, all this confusion, and we're getting down to the nitty gritty because someone feels some sort of regret or remorse. The Five of Cups. Someone really feels like they've missed out. They've, they've lost out in some way. Now, this in this deck, the Five of Cups is the same as many others. You know, you have those three cups that are spilled, and then, you know, you still have those two cups behind you. So I feel like someone still feels like, you know, they, they're, they're maybe kind of crying over spilled milk, um, with, for lack of a better term, you know, kind of mourning over the loss of whatever is in the Three of Cups, and it might be pretty social in nature. But there are those fairies there, you know, handing, uh, bringing the two cups 
that are remaining, right? And then you have this Four of Cups here. So this is talking about a missed opportunity to a certain extent, but you have another depiction of that Three of Cups behind this woman, and I really feel like this is somebody that's not really focused on the social aspect of it anymore. Um, even though they may have missed an opportunity that really could have taught them, you know, I could have taught them to not value, you know, what other people have to say and more value, more put more stock, more um, value in your own feelings, your own emotions, your own Ace of Cups, right? Okay. So let's talk about the lovers here. Please clarify, sir. Thank you so much. Page of Wands. Okay, so look. So now the balance that you've struck is inspiring you, okay, to be something new. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay. So you have the Knight of Cups again. The Knight of Cups has come out twice. Underneath the deck, however, is the Eight of Swords. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Page of Wands and the Knight of Cups on the Lovers. We have two more cards, but we'll talk about that in a second. So someone definitely has come into some sort of balance, some sort of union within, and it's inspiring them to move forward with some sort of emotional offer. But they're not moving all that quickly because they're still got the Eight of Swords there. We also, oh boy, we've, <laughs> oh boy. We've got the King of Cups, but we also have the Five of Swords. Now, we could be talking about retrograde energies because Mercury is in retrograde right now. Mercury is going to be in retrograde until about December 6th. Um, so communication is really not key right now. So that could be why someone is in this Eight of Swords energy. They don't know what to say, okay? The lovers is here. So we could be talking about a soulmate relationship. We could also, re we really could be talking about someone that has come into a greater sense of union within and really does want to move forward, has kind of matured emotionally and wants to move forward with some sort of offer, okay? You have... You, you have someone that has come into some sort of balance, some sort of union within, and they're inspired to move forward. They're inspired to send a message of passion. We've got two pages so far, the Page of Cups and the Page of Wands now. This is, this is inspiration. This is creativity. This is wanting to move forward. This is still somewhat childlike, maybe even naive. But with the King of Cups here, this is more like someone is starting and someone is quite mature, knows what they want, or at least has figured it out, and now is in the beginning stages of wanting to, 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 to communicate about it, okay? You got to start somewhere. And so with the, pay, the Knight of Cups and the King of Cups, there's definitely an offer that wants to come in from the King of Cups. However, you've got this retrograde energy, Five of Swords. And the Eight of Swords. Because of this retrograde energy, somebody just feels trapped right now. They don't know what to say. They're all up in their head about it. There is also a fear of rejection. This could be someone coming back, coming in from the past, someone that you dealt with in the past, someone that you may have been talking to maybe, and then they just ghosted you. There is some sort of fear of some, some sort of retribution with the Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords. Like someone is up in their head, like they, they, they may have finally figured out what they, what it is that they want and they've matured um, emotionally. They've become more emotionally mature, more emotionally available, but with the Five of Swords here, there could be too much that happened in the past where it's like, if they were to approach you, you may just like completely reject them. Maybe even take an opportunity to take some, to, to put some, to, to get some jabs in. No, I'm not saying that's what you would really be doing, but that is for some of these people, some, for someone that I'm talking about here that I'm channeling for, that is a fear of theirs. And I think they would be, to a certain extent, they'd be pretty justified in being afraid of that. But yeah. 
All right. So now since we've got the Knight of Cups twice, let's see what the Knight of Cups here is symbolizing. Please clarify Knight of Cups spirit. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me see. Did anything flip? Doobie doob doob. Nope. All right. Underneath the deck is... Ooh! There's the Page of Swords. Page of Swords. Okay. It came out with the Six of Pentacles here. Um... Wow, judgment again. And ooh, whoa, the Eight of Cups in reverse. Oh, wait, there's one more. The Seven of Wands. And that just fell here on the Lovers with the Page of Wands, Knight of Cups, Five of Swords, King of Cups. Wow. All right, so there's finally some sort of reciprocity coming in. Someone wants to balance the scales with the Six of Cups. I'm sorry, with the Six of Pentacles and Judgment. We could be talking about a soulmate because I did just say the Six of Cups even though it didn't come out. But there is an energy of someone being watched here. And it's funny because I was seeing the Knight of Cups as... Um, as you the viewer and I am and it is you still because many of you have really come into this union within balance of masculine and feminine and you absolutely do have a cup to offer now so this is you ready to make an offer to someone but it's not it's like you're not really readily moving forward to give anybody an offer yet but then here we go <sighs> And then here is, <laughs> here is the person that wants to make the offer here, the King of Cups and the Knight of Cups. But there is defense, but there are defenses put up. There are boundaries. There are barriers with the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands fell on this side of the pile. Now the Lovers is speaking about you, the viewer, having this union within, but it's also talking about your soulmate, your, your, maybe your divine partner, maybe, maybe, maybe your twin flame. But it doesn't have to be. I, I feel like for many of you, you know this person already. Or you know of this person, even though they may not come to mind. And they could have been watching you for some time. Completely silent. Not really saying anything. But now there are boundaries. Things could have been a lot, would have been a lot easier in the past. But now there are boundaries. That need to be overcome with the Seven of Wands here. And remember, I said to you, someone wants to come forward. They are having the inspiration to come forward with the Page of Wands. They've matured, they've grown, and now they're in a position where they really can come forward and make some sort of solid offer. This is an offer coming from the King of Cups, okay, with the Knight of Cups here. But with this Five of Swords energy, first of all, there's a retrograde happening. And that's the biggest thing that I'm hearing, because as I was just about to pull up this card, I heard retrograde. So that's the biggest part of what's going on here. But also, for some of you, I guess in the situation in which if we were to be talking about a twin flame, or just someone that you dealt with in the past, now there are boundaries in place. And I said to you, some of you, some of them may be afraid that you would take this opportunity to get a few jabs in. Like, they got a few jabs in your back here. You see how this woman has two swords in her back and, the, and that man is walking away with three of them? Well, maybe some of them might be afraid that you'll take that opportunity to get them back. Even if it's just, just with a few hurtful words. And so, here we go. There's that confirmation of that. Or just at least the retrograde energies, Seven of Wands. It's, this is really an energy of someone is really not putting up with any shit. Might as well have the Queen of Swords here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here with the Knight of Cups, again, with this second, what the, the original one, the one that came out first, we have Six of Pentacles, Judgment, and the Eight of Cups in reverse. And the Page of Swords. So there's been some sort of judgment call here. There's some, been some sort of decision that's been made. 
and someone is not walking away. Someone actually wants to reciprocate. I'm feeling like for some of you, if you have been in a position where you've been giving to a situation, maybe overgiving, maybe, most likely to be honest, but then you learned your lesson and you pulled back, well, a judgment call has been made and now someone isn't walking away. Not only are they not walking away, they're probably watching you, Page of Swords, trying to figure out how how they can step up to the plate and reciprocate. Six of Pentacles, Judgment. Eight of Cups in reverse. Someone is not walking away. And what's underneath the Page of Swords? Temperance. <laughs> Union. Balance. Okay. Patience also. All right. So then with the Seven of Pentacles here, this is definitely some sort of harvest. All right. Judgment has come out twice here. So has the Knight of Cups so far. Um, so there really is, there really has been some sort of judgment call that has been made. Reciprocity, I'm hearing. Let's see what this harvest is about. Seven of Pentacles, please hear it. Thank you so much. Let's clarify the Seven of Pentacles. The Moon and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay. The universe isn't really going to tell you. Wow. So the universe isn't really going to tell you what this harvest is going to be. They don't want you to know. Why don't they want you to know? Because they don't want you anticipating. Okay. Nine of Cups, though. Wish fulfillment is about to be had. And the Nine of Pentacles. Two cards of endings. The Nine of Pentacles is of just rewards. It's about you have really done a lot of the hard work and now your rewards are coming in, coming towards you. Wishes are going to be granted. But there's still some illusion around it. You don't know where it's going to come from or when it's going to come. <laughs> Universe is saying, we ain't finna tell you neither. <laughs> Not going to tell you. We don't want you to know because we don't want you to sabotage it by anticipating it. This is definitely a message for me. And think about it. Think about it. We had the Page of Swords, and underneath the Page of Swords was Temperance. Patiently waiting. Let the, you let the, there is still some sort of divine alchemy coming through, moving in, to, coming into play. So allow that to happen. Don't get too, up, too caught up on the where, the how, the when, or the why. Just let it flow. Stay in your place of abundance. Stay in your place of independence. Just stand on your own. Stand in your power, okay? Allow that to work on your behalf. You've been doing it already. So just stand in your autonomy and let the universe flow, okay? Also though, the moon is talking about intuition. Now, this feels, especially with all this page energy that's on the, well actually we only have two. No, we had three because of the page of swords, but with, with this just this page energy, this feels very playful with the moon. All this is saying is continue to follow, to trust your instincts, instincts and trust your intuition, but also know that divine that the divine is not going to reveal everything to you right now, okay? Because you just don't need to know. But it feels great. That feels great. All right, guys. So give me a few moments here. I'm just going to reset, and we're going to do a second pull. So this is the weekend edition so bear with me for just a few minutes I'm just gonna reset here but ultimately that feels good um, I don't know really what else there is to say about that. You know, union within is a big thing. It's a really big thing. And it's one of the best things you could do for yourself, to be honest. You know what I mean? 
that will really help you bring everything that you want in life together because you're creating, you're manifesting it from a place of balance within. Okay. Wow. We've got the Ten of Wands and we've got the Hierophant now. All right. I'm just going to continue. All right. So, interesting. So getting into our second part of the reading here, the Ten of Wands and the Hierophant. This is definitely the energies that I was picking up of someone, you know, with the Five of Wands energy and the King of Swords. There, there, are, there are burdens that need to be released here when it comes to the status quo, when it comes to what's expected of you. Because what's expected of you isn't necessarily what's the best thing for you, right? Some people may be in a marriage that, or some sort of commitment that's just burdening them that, you know, something needs to let up. But let's see what else we've got here. Thank you so much, Spirit. The Ten of Pentacles. The Six of Swords. So we could definitely be talking about some sort of, okay. Oh boy, that's a lot. Hey now, hey now. We've got the King of Cups again underneath the deck here. Whoa, guys. All right, this is a big, this is a big pull. This is a really big pull. We're, here's that Six of Cups that I was talking about before. Um, all right, so... There are definitely, I'm hearing there are some financial burdens. Um, I'm going to get to the rest of these later, but I want to start with the Six of Swords and the Six of Cups. We definitely have some sort of soulmate situation, or we have something from the past, um, from your childhood, a desire that you might have from your childhood, or the, or that you're, wor that you're working towards, wanting to, or are actively moving towards. Or this is something from the past that you are moving away from. It could be a commitment, a marriage with the Ten of Wands and the Hierophant here. We also have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. And you're moving forward in the direction of your Ten of Pentacles. Now, you have, oh boy, we, okay, we've got the Ace of Swords. We've got the Queen of Swords. And we've got the universe. The universe is a unique card in this deck, which talks about things coming full circle. And followed by that. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at this, guys. So the judgment and the page of cups came out again. But judgment this time came out in reverse. For me, this is saying, judgment in reverse is saying that the, the judgment has been made, the call has been answered, and now somebody is moving forward. My, my, my. So this is a continuation of um, what the King of Cups represented in the first poll, okay? This is a little more, this is like more of an insight into what's going on with this person. This person has been heavily weighed down, heavily weighed down by uh, the responsibilities, the commitments made to society. This is not even to him, his or herself. This is to society, the people around them, maintaining the status quo. And that is not something they want to do any longer or you want to do any longer. This could be you. Okay? Now, especially with the King of Cups resembling someone that is emotionally mature, and especially with, you know, the lovers that came out talking about that union of masculine and feminine within, this absolutely could be what's going on with with you internally within your inner masculine. Okay? Your inner divine masculine. But we have someone that's moving away, with the, moving into uh, transitioning with the Six of Swords, um, and the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is like driving the ship now. Now that this person or now that you have become more um, emotionally mature, you are able to look at the things from your past, also look at the burdens that you've been carrying, 
weigh them, you know, juxta juxtaposition them against each other and say, okay, what's really serving me and what really isn't serving me? And you absolutely, or they absolutely, whoever this is, this person is absolutely looking at it that way because right in the middle of the reading, you have the Queen of Swords. Is this serving me? Is this not serving me? All right. And then and you also have the Ace of Swords. The epiphany, the aha moment, and the universe, which is saying, which is help, which is saying that everything is coming, it has come full circle. All right. What have you learned in this situation? So somebody is taking really, really taking what they have learned in their lives so far and using it to propel them forward, using it to propel them towards um, something, something from the past, something they may have wanted to achieve, accomplish from the past, a relationship that they may have had in the past that really could bring abundance, um, fulfillment in the material realm, some sort of family situation. But it's, but whatever this is that this person is moving towards, they're going to need to invest in it because the Ten of Pentacles is not something that happens overnight, nor do they want it. They, it's not that they want something that's going to happen overnight, but I really feel like either you or this person wants to move forward with a situation that really has value for them because they want to invest in something long term. The Ten of Pentacles is absolutely long term. It really, it also could talk about finances and career. This could be something that you may have wanted to do your whole life. You, you may have wanted to do it as a child and you never really did it. You never allowed yourself to. Wow. That's really fantastic. Okay, so let's get into the clarification then. I want to start, I definitely want to start with the Hierophant and the Ten of Wands. Give three shuffles here. Oh my goodness. I'm having trouble with the cards today, guys. <laughs> Alright, one more. Hierophant and the Ten of Wands, please. We're going to start there. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Ten of Wands and the Hierophant. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh no. Okay, the Fool is in reverse. All right. Ugh. Oh, okay. Underneath the deck we have, hey now, we've got the Queen of Wands. All right, the Queen of Wands is a cardinal energy. This is a representation of the Divine Feminine to me. This is Aries energy. Um, we have the Fool in Reverse. We have the Four of Swords. We have the Six of Pentacles. And we have the, ooh, the Eight of Wands. And the Six of Wands fell off the table. So... To me, this is a release, especially since this fell off the table here. This is a release of um, pride and ego when it comes to the situation. I really feel like whoever was in this situation with the Ten of Wands and the Hierophant here, Hierophant, they were they had some sort of obligation. There was some sort of commitment that they had made that was like, and it doesn't even have to be like an official commitment. It was just like you know keep uh, keeping with keeping the status quo. And that just became extremely boring, um, extremely restrictive, burdensome even. Um, and with the Fool in Reverse here, there is ener there are energies of um, wanting to take a leap of faith, but it's blocked a little bit. With it in Reverse, um, and you have the Four of Swords. But also, so there's some sort of rest that needs to happen. There's some sort of meditation, some sort of healing that's going on. Um, but also, this is... 
when this first came out, the first thing I thought of was you're not, this person or whoever we're talking about, whoever's going through this energy right now, is not going to be a fool for these, for this, these people or this establishment any longer. And it's, and with the Four of Swords here, there's an energy of, um, biding their time, gaining their strength, doing some meditation before they really move forward. With the Eight of Wands and the Six of Pentacles, they really move forward towards something that's going to be more reciprocal for them. Because this energy here with the Ten of Wands and the Hierophant, the Hierophant, this is just like excessive taking. So you just give and give and give to this establishment and they don't really give anything back. Because you are just... You're supposed to just give to the establishment to keep it afloat. And it keep it, keeping it standing is enough for you to get back in return. Hail to the motherfucking no. I'm out of here. Because this is not healthy, says this person with this eight of wands and the six of pentacles. Moving towards something that would be more reciprocal. More balanced, more loving, more caring, more free. And the queen, with the Queen of Wands here, this is someone, I really feel like this is something, this is a situation that's influenced by the rise of the Divine Feminine. Cardinal energy, Aries energy. Not afraid to go after what it is that she wants. But also she doesn't chase, which is funny because this is a, a female lion here and it's usually the, lion, the the female. It is the female lions that do the hunting in 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 you know in lion prides. <laughs> so this is the huntress. In some cases, it is the huntress, and that's really confusing. And me being an Aries sun, I totally get that. And part of the you know identifying as part of the divine feminine connect collective, that is pretty confusing. It's like okay, well, if I were a lioness. In a pride, I would need to be the one going out and hunting. But at the same time, I don't chase. But I'm an Aries. We do go after what it want, we want, but yet we don't chase. That's confusing. <laughs> That's really confusing. Okay. Anyway, um, we're moving towards, let's, let's, let's clarify now this row here. Six of Swords, Six of Cups, and Ten of Pentacles. Please, Spirit. Thank you so much. There's that hair front again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, right. Wow, goodness gracious, that's a lot of cards. Okay. And something flipped over here. Two of Wands. There are definitely some sort of decisions that need to be made here between the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands. Now, the Two of Swords came out with the hair front again. <laughs> Underneath the deck. Woohoo! We have the Ace of Swords again. Okay, so we have the Unknown and the Eight of Pentacles. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Hierophant. We have the Two of Swords and the Nine of Swords. So, this patriarchy, this status quo, this establishment is really causing somebody some serious anxiety. It's like they have to make a decision. They know they need to make a decision, but there are still some things I feel like that they're refusing to see, or at least in the past they have refused to see. Okay, with the Nine of Swords, it's the anxiety that's keeping this person from making this decision, all right? Something from your past, something from your childhood is really getting in the way, I feel like. All right? With the Eight of Pentacles and the Unknown here, there's very much an energy of needing to have an open mind and doing the work, even though you're not necessarily sure of where you're going. This is really talking about doing the inner work to generate the risk, the 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 response that you're looking for, the result that you're looking for. Even though you don't exactly know where the universe is taking you or how it's going to come to you, what form it's going to come to you in, blah, 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 blah. This is still maintaining the momentum, doing the work so that the universe can bring to you what it is you truly desire and having to keep an open mind. 
And to be quite honest, if you're caught up with the Hierophant here, this patriarchy, this status quo, that's one of the most closed-minded situations ever, right? So that's even more of a reason why somebody needs to make a decision. But they're all up in their head about it with the Nine of Swords. And almost refusing to see with the Two of Swords. Now, you do have the Ace of Pentacles that flew out here. And that's great. What else do we have here? Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's that Five of Swords again. But again, this is retrograde energy. And it came out with, with the Empress. So I really feel like this is something that was definitely inspired by Venus being in retrograde. Now, Venus is actually still in shadow period. And she's going to be in shadow period until about, I want to say, the 17th of December. So... I really feel like come mid-December, many of you could have a brand new beginning because that came out with the Ace of Pentacles on top of the Ten of Pentacles here. And I'm telling you, this is all about investment. This is all about the long term, not the short term, okay? We're, 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 we're grown-ass men and women here now. Like We ain't trying to mess around with no short-term shit anymore. We want the real deal, okay? But you have to keep doing the work because there's a lot of unknown situations here. There's still a lot of influence in, by the, the patriarchy, the establishment, the status quo, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. There's still pretty heavy influence in that situation. But there also could be some learning that's happening from this, okay? Now we have the Ace of Swords twice here. The Ace of Swords is right here, and the Ace of Swords is underneath the deck here. All right? So, there are definitely some epiphanies happening, some aha moments. But let's go ahead and clarify this second row here. Ace of Swords, Queen of Swords, and the Universe. Please, Spirit, please clarify. Thank you so much. Woo, the King of Wands in reverse. Wow, the star in reverse again. Underneath the deck, we have the Nine of Cups. This is very interesting. So we have a situation here in which we have... The counterparts did come out, the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands was underneath the deck for the top row here. And now the King of Wands has come out. And that came out in reverse. And it came out with the star in reverse. Again. I I, I can't remember, even though it, this was only like maybe 20 minutes ago, but I can't remember if the star came out today. I know it came out in reverse at some point, but I can't remember if that was today or yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I don't think it came out this this way today. Right, it didn't. So, um, so this is this is kind of a, a continuation. This row here is kind of a continuation of the message um, from Monday, I believe it was, about everything coming out coming full circle. The King of Wands is definitely the Divine Masculine. A rep it can be a representation of the Divine Masculine in three D corporeal form and this is something this is a wish that never was fulfilled this is something that never came through this wish was not granted or it could have been that it was taking too long for this wish to be granted and someone finally I want to say got some sense it was like screw that I'm not waiting around any longer with the Ace of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Universe, because uh, because this, the situation came full circle. The lesson was learned. So there was no need to wait around for this any longer because the healing happened. The karmic, the, the karmic debt has been paid. The wounds, for the most part, have been healed. And now somebody can move forward towards the Nine of Cups, the true, the wish fulfillment. Okay, you have both cards of the wish fulfillment here, the Nine of Cups and the and the Star. But in this situation, the Star is talking about the healing, the karmic debts being paid. I want to clarify a little bit more, 
Please, Spirit. Please, Spirit. Clarify. Okay. Ah, yes. Underneath the deck now we have the Four of Wands, and this is the balance within, the unity within, the foundation within. This is good. Even though this is not, yes, you may have come to some sort of balance, unity within, There is this is still not a time to rest on your laurels, okay? You still got work to do. <coughs> wow. Talk about balance. You've got the sun. We've got the two of cups. There it is. There's that balance. The unity within. You've got justice. Justice has been served. Justice, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> And you've got the six, I'm sorry, the Knight of Wands. So this is the spiritual warrior card um, to me. It's also, you know, the card of Sagittarius. This is Sagittarius season that we're in, in Western astrology. But this is moving forward swiftly on your path. What happened in this situation here, this could be a twin flame, most likely is a twin flame situation because this just resonates with what's going on with the twin flame. This, at least this row here, um, but it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. But what happened here with the King of Wands and both the King of Wands and the star in reverse is somebody learned the lesson from this situation with this person. And the illumination came with the sun. They were able to bring forward this balance of unity with masculine and feminine energy within, which brought them justice, which gave them the upper hand, which was like, okay, well, I'm moving on now because I don't need this situation anymore. And now someone is moving quickly along their path and is coming towards some sort of union externally, I would say, because they are developing generating this union within. And it's good. It's really good. All right. That just feels like it was a little bit all over the place. But hey, these are general reading guys, so. <laughs> Alrighty, we're getting into the Oracle deck now. We're going to move forward with the Animal Spirit Guides. Here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit, for the weekend, November 30th to December 2nd. Hyena in reverse. I like that. And tarantula. All right. Underneath the deck is fox, but we can get there in a second. Hyena is here in reverse. And I really like seeing this in reverse. Um, we're going to read it, but... Hyena isn't necessarily the best energy. We have two fire energies here. Hyena and um, tarantula. But we're going to start with hyena. Humor, wit, sarcasm. The hyena personality is a jokester and crowd pleaser, but below the surface there are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. When the hyena card appears, it's time to reflect on your reliance on sarcasm and humor to express your truth. Are you using jokes to hide old resentments in relationships or to mask things that you feel uncomfortable discussing? What would happen if you took your goals seriously? And to me, with Hyena in reverse here, this is like kind of taking off that mask and taking things seriously. When in balance, Hyena is charming, witty, and fun to be around. When out of balance, Hyena is scrappy, petty, and suspicious. To bring into balance, one must practice some sobriety. Okay. And then you also have Tarantula. At a crossroad, claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers patient and calm like an old friend that knows your inner soul. 
it already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, Tarantula follows its intuition. When out of balance, Tarantula hesitates and over-intellectualizes. To bring into balance, one must do some daily journaling. And honestly, those two energies really go <clears throat> hand in hand. You know, with following intuition, follow your intuition and finally getting down to the, to the root of situations, to the lessons in the situation. And removing the mask, um, try, it's, you know, not drowning your sorrows, actually facing things, it's actually happening. And that's a good thing. I mean, you have judgment in reverse here. Judgment came out in the beginning of the reading, came out upright, but now it's reversed because the call has been answered and someone is moving forward. Sobriety is what I'm hearing. Sobriety is really important right now for some, maybe all of us, because we're going through a major ascension. I mean, I know I could, I could probably cut back on the amount of wine I'm drinking, but you know, baby steps, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to close the reading now with Oracle guidance from the uh, Crystal Mandala Oracle. Okay. All right, Spirit, best messages, please, for the weekend, November. Oops, there we go. One more. Okay, one more. Please, Spirit. One more. There we go. Wow. Okay. So the first card we got is this one. Card number 14, Angel Lahabiel and Black Tourmaline, Purification. And then the second card that we got is card number 17, Angel Bath Coal and Aquamarine, Authentic Voice. Whoops. So we're going to start with 14, Purification. We bring you the gift of purification. This is your chance to let go of what you no longer wish to hold. It might be a toxic burden within your body, mind, or emotions you wish to be freed from so you can feel lighter, happier, and more energized to attend to the things that matter most. We come to you at a time when you have become overloaded with energies, thoughts, or even perhaps physical toxins or possessions inhibiting your capacity for joy and vibrancy. If there is any fear within at the prospect of releasing something from your life, be reassured this cleansing is a loving grace that will help you feel happier. We are not here to take anything from you, but rather to free you from what you no longer wish to hold on to. The more you are willing to allow us to assist in this process, the better and clearer you shall feel. Insights into your relationships, choices in life, and issues that may have confused you will become very clear. You will become more aware of your truths and feel empowered to live your life in, on your own terms. This is, there is only benefit to gain here, and our blessing comes straight from the loving heart of the divine to assist you. Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay, and now card number 17, Authentic Voice. <clears throat> okay. We bring you the gift of authentic voice. We want you to know your own truths and to speak them in your own way because you have something of value to share, your inner world, your unique viewpoint, and the person that you are. When you speak from your authentic voice, you help others relax, come out of their heads, into their hearts, and remember the truth of who they are as well. Your authentic voice doesn't have to sound like the voice of any other. It doesn't need to always be soft, although in its own way, it will always be loving. Your authentic voice has a place in this world and has been designed to be valuable, to be a valuable part of the sacred choir of soul voices, which creates music for the universe. As you trust in your authentic voice, your ability to manifest your divine destiny will grow and your responsible use of the power of your voice will help many. All right. 
So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, I will not be doing a Twin Flame reading live this weekend because uh, I have an event that starts on Sunday. It's a baby shower. A friend of mine is having a baby and she's having a shower for it. And so this Sunday is the shower. It starts at 3 o'clock. So I'm going to be recording um, a Twin Flame reading this weekend. Won't be doing it live, but that's okay. I will see you guys live for happy hour on Monday. Yeah? Either way, have a great weekend. Take care. And I look forward to connecting with you all again very, very soon. Yeah? Much love. Mwah! Bye!